What is going on guys, it's Pangino here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the State of Decay 2 Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. This guide is aimed at everyone out there regardless of whether you're on an ultra high end system all the way down to a completely old and potato PC. This guide aims to help you guys get the best performance possible with inside of the game making sure that your load times are as low as possible, your FPS is as high as possible and the overall experience is a much more enjoyable one and more tailored towards your system specs. There are multiple FPS configs with inside of this guide for you guys who are on higher end systems all the way down to low end systems to make sure that you guys can go ahead and fully customise the optimizations you're about to apply. And if you guys are happy with the results of this guide, please do leave a like down below on the video as it helps me out tremendously. Like and share it around with any of your friends, family, co-workers, teammates, or anyone that might be playing State of Decay 2, which can benefit from these optimizations. If you guys can also comment some of your results down below, any questions, queries, feedback, or suggestions, that is always deeply appreciated as well. And last but not least guys, for any of you guys who wish to further support the channel and the content which I make, you guys can further support me over on the Patreon platform, the link is in the description down below and on the screen now. If you wish to go and support me over there, it's just for you guys who frequently follow my content and maybe want to further support the channel and no donations or patrons are necessary. And with all that said and done out of the way, let's get straight into the video to keep this video as fast and as precise as possible. So starting off with the guide, just like in most of my guides, you guys need to go ahead and navigate into the description down below and find the FPS pack download, which I have linked in the description down below and it should be very easy to find. Inside of there, you'll find two links. If the first link doesn't work for the download, just try the second link just in case the website might not work for you guys. Go ahead and download the file. Once you guys have got the file downloaded, I recommend putting it onto your desktop and the file should look very similar to this. Now to open the file you're either going to need a program called 7-Zip or WinRAR, just simply go ahead and Google for either of those programs, install them and come back to this video, but I'll be very surprised if anyone watching this doesn't already have one of those programs installed. Once you guys have got one of those programs installed or if you already have one installed, you can simply go ahead and right click on the file and click extract here. Once you've done that you'll then be given a folder with the exact same name called State of Decay 2 FPS Pack by Pange. Simply go ahead and double click on the folder, up on the side of there you'll then find two folders and a file. The game files folder, the optimizations folder, and a credit.txt. Inside of the credits.txt you can find the original download link and sources for any of the links provided with inside of the video and any of the original author's websites for any optimizations in which we use, so you can pay credits over towards them or find the original download sources. And with inside of here we're going to be starting off with the first step of this guide, which is going into the game files folder. Inside of there you'll then find three folders for a high to medium end config, a low end config and an ultra low end config. Now please do bear in mind if you guys are planning on using the ultra low end config, this will disable a lot of graphics features and your game won't particularly look great, but it should help you guys on super low end hardware actually get the game running. So again, if you only care about being able to play the game and you don't particularly care how the game will look, go with the ultra low end config, otherwise stay away from it. If you guys are looking at the other two configs, I'd recommend going with a config which matches your system specs. If you're on a high end system, go with the high to medium end config. If you're on a medium end, go with the high to medium end. Or if you're on a low end or a slightly older PC, which can still run most modern games, but not at particularly great frame rates, I'd go with the low end config. So once you guys have gone ahead and decided which config you want to go with, do bear in mind though, you can switch these configs at any time you wish to do so. So you can come back and mix and match and try them out if you wish to do so. Go ahead and click on the config in which you're going to be going with. So for me, I'm going to be going with the high to medium end config. And with inside of there, you'll then find a game user settings config file and a scalability file. Now with inside of here to install all these files we're simply going to be going ahead and dragging this folder over to the left hand side and we're then going to be going down to the bottom left of our machine and clicking the windows button we're then going to be going ahead and typing in percent app data percent just like so and pressing enter once you guys have done that simply go over to the app data folder found here at the top click on that then go down to local by double clicking and this time we're then going to be scrolling down until we find a folder with inside of here called packages once you've found the packages folder double click then on the side of here you're going to be finding a bunch of different folders with a bunch of different weird looking names the folder we're looking for with inside of here is called microsoft.dayton and it's usually hwekyb3d or be very similarly named to that you want to be looking for the microsoft dayton folder though once you guys have found that simply go ahead and double click on the folder with inside of there we're then going to be going into local state then we're going to be going into State of Decay 2, Saved, Config, UWP, and with inside of there you'll find a bunch of configuration files. Now to install the custom optimized game files, simply go ahead and move this folder over to the right hand side. Go back to the folder with the optimized game files which has been provided here. You guys can then simply go over here, highlight both of these files, and drag them into the game config folders, and simply go ahead and hit replace the files in this destination. Once you guys have done that, you have now successfully installed your custom configs and we can exit out of both of the folders. Proceeding on from there, what we can now do is actually go into the game itself to set our in-game settings to match those of the config so everything is being read properly. 
Once the game is then booted up and you're in the main menu, simply navigate down to the bottom left hand side and go to the settings tab. Once you're inside of the settings tab, simply go ahead and navigate down to the video tab and we can start off by going to our display type and resolution. I recommend setting the display type to full screen and the resolution to desktop resolution. For you guys who are running on lower end configs though, what you can go ahead and do is actually experiment around with running this game in windowed mode by going to the windowed mode here and actually changing the in-game resolution here to something lower than what your native resolution is. I recommend going ahead and starting off with 1280 by 720 for any of you guys who are running on medium end or lower end PCs who are still getting low FPS after this guide. Just simply come back to this screen and set these settings and try those out as well. But for the majority of you guys, I recommend setting it to full screen and using the desktop resolution. I recommend going ahead and turning VSync to the off position as it generates input lag and it's unnecessary. And then go ahead and apply those changes. Proceeding on from there and going to the more important tab, we're going to be going to the advanced video tab found here. Once you guys are inside of the advanced video tab, simply go over to the default quality tab and select anything with inside of here. What we're going to be doing is starting off by going to the anti-aliasing quality and turning this all the way down to low. Foliage draw distance, I recommend turning down to low as well, but some of you guys can turn this up depending on what your system specs are. And this is where it pretty much comes down to customization. So foliage draw distance, you can set to whichever you wish to do so. I'm going to be going personally with medium. World level of detail, I'm going to be going down to medium. Character level of detail, I'm going to be going down to medium as well. Shadow quality, I'm going to be sticking with medium. But for any of you guys who want more FPS, you can switch this down to low. And you'll be seeing some fantastic FPS benefits as those customized files actually allow for lower end shadow quality on the lower setting. So if you really want to benefit from those custom game files, go ahead and set this to low. But do bear in mind, this will have a visual decrease. For me, I'm going to be sticking with medium. Ambient occlusion quality, I recommend turning all the way down to low. It makes the game look a little bit nicer, but it comes at an FPS here. Post process quality, I recommend turning all the way down to low as well. But for any of you guys on slightly higher end hardware, you can go ahead and stick with medium. Screen space reflections, I recommend turning to the off position for pretty much everyone unless you're on a super high end PC. And subsurface scattering, I recommend turning all the way down to low. Again, if you guys want the best FPS possible, you guys are going to want to go ahead and set all of this down to low, as the game still looks really nice texture wise, but it will definitely go ahead and further increase your FPS. But all of the options I've set to low with inside of here, everyone, no matter what PC you're running on, should be running these on low. So anti editing on low, ambient occlusion on low, and subsurface scattering on low. Everything else can be tuned customly depending on what you prefer, but again, if you want the best FPS possible, do stick with low. Once you've got everything applied, you can then simply go ahead and, and exit out of that tab, and we can now go ahead and exit out of the game. Right, now that we've gone ahead and actually optimized the game settings themselves, we can go ahead and further optimize the operating system to ensure that we're getting the best FPS possible, not just with inside of State of Decay 2, but pretty much every single game you can play. This is especially important for State of Decay 2 because you can't really customize too many things to do with the game application itself, as it's running on the UWP platform with inside of Windows and the Xbox platform. So making sure that our operating system is tailored for the best performance possible, we can actually go ahead and further boost the FPS, and these changes are very simple. What we're going to be doing is starting off by navigating down to the bottom left hand side and we're going to be typing in this pc once you guys have done that simply then go ahead and right click on this pc go down to properties and then on the side of this tab which opens here navigate to the left hand side and click on advanced system settings on the side of here go to the advanced tab found here at the top go to performance and click on setting with inside of it it'll usually be set to let windows choose what's best for my computer but what we're going to be doing is clicking custom and unchecking everything with inside of here by simply clicking on the tick making sure it's unchecked until we've got everything unchecked now with inside of here, we're now going to be re-enabling show thumbnails instead of icons and smooth edges of screen fonts, as everything else is unnecessary and can take away from your FPS. I personally like to keep smooth edges of screen fonts disabled, as I like the rougher looking text with inside of Windows, and you guys can do this as well if you wish to do so, but this option here is personal preference, and I recommend most people keep it on. Once you guys have got that set up, simply go ahead and press apply. Once that's then been applied, simply navigate to the advanced tab found here at the top. Go to Processor Scheduling and set to adjust the best performance of programs. And then we're then going to be following that up by going down to the Virtual Memory tab and clicking Change. Now with inside of the Virtual Memory tab, this is actually where we can set up our paging file with inside of Windows. Now I know the majority of you guys watching this video probably don't know what a paging file is. And in brief, what a page file basically is, is it's pretty much reserved RAM or what happens when your RAM usage goes high and there's nowhere else for that process data to be going. It will typically then spill over to your paging file and your paging file is typically put on a hard drive. Now with inside of here, what we're now going to be doing Doing is optimizing where your page file is to ensure that it's running as fast as possible as typically paging files usually run a lot slower than RAM does so we want to make sure that the paging file is running as fast as possible. So to do this and optimize your page file what we're going to be doing is unchecking this box here at the top for automatically manage page files and with inside of here you'll then see a list of all of the hard disks and SSDs with inside of your system. Starting from all the way from the top to the bottom we're then going to be highlighting the C drive going down to the no paging file option here and pressing set. 
then pressing yes, and we're then going to proceed to do that step for every single hard drive and SSD on our system. So continue down, no page file set, no page file set. Now you guys might have more drives in there than I do, or you might have less, it doesn't take the amount of, just go ahead and make sure that you do that step for every option in there. Once you guys have now deleted all of the old paging files from your systems, we can now actually go ahead and place the new paging file in the best place possible. And to find out which is the best place possible with inside of your machine to place your paging file, we need to look at the criteria on the right hand side of the screen. Now at number one, the best place to put your paging file would be with inside of an SSD in your system, regardless of what you're using that SSD for. Whether it be your C drive, whether it be a backup drive, we always want to be putting the paging file on an SSD if you have one. Second base place to put it is if you guys have multiple hard drives in your machine, you want to be placing your paging file on the hard drive that does not have your games installed to it, as that hard drive is typically being used a lot less. And last but not least, if you guys only have the one drive with inside of your system, whether that be an SSD or a hard drive, you only have one drive inside of your system and that is your C drive, we're going to be installing your page file to your C drive. So going off of that criteria, if you have an SSD, it's going to be going on that. If you don't have an SSD, but you have two or more hard drives in your machine, put it on the hard drive that does not have your games on it. And last but not least, if you only have one hard drive or SSD installed and you have no other drives to put the paging file on, we're going to be installing it to that. So for me, I have an SSD and multiple hard drives, so I'm going to be going with the SSD, which is actually my C drive. Once you guys have located what drive you're going to be installing it to, simply go ahead and highlight the drive. For me, that's my C drive. Then go down to System Manage Size for the page file. Click Set. Once I send on, simply go ahead and press OK. OK. Apply. And OK once again. You can then go to the system properties and press OK one last time and you'll be met with this screen here to restart your machine. We're actually going to be going ahead and pressing restart later as we're going to be restarting later on in the video once we've applied all of the optimizations so we can make sure that Windows is running to the best of its ability. And that brings us on to our next step. For this step we're going to be going down to the bottom right hand side and optimizing our audio settings. We're going to be doing this to eliminate any post processing that might be being applied by Windows and also making sure there's no mismatches with inside of audio rates with the game files to ensure that we don't run into any stuttering or slowdowns whilst playing games. You guys will not be noticing an audible difference, this won't change your audio quality, it will just reduce any issues if any do come up with inside of games. So we're going to be navigating to the bottom right hand side to our speaker icon, right clicking on the speakers and going to the sounds tab. When inside of here we're then going to be going to the playback tab at the top left hand side and then scrolling down and finding what we're using for our audio output device. So for me I'm using my speaker device and you can usually find out what yours is because it will have the green tick next to it. Once you guys have found your audio output device simply go ahead and right click on the audio output device, go down to properties. And we're going to start off by going to the Enhancements tab found here at the top. We're then going to be going over to the Disable All Sound Effects tab found here on the left hand side and clicking Disable All Sound Effects. Now before we go ahead and apply this change, some of you guys watching this, if you are listening to audio, whether it be this video or music whilst doing this, your audio might actually cut out. And if it does, don't panic, it's just a small bug. All you guys need to do is simply go ahead and close out of any of the programs you were listening to, open them back up and they'll be working perfectly. So once the sense set, simply go down and press Apply. And then following on from there, we can then go to the Advanced tab found here at the top. Then go to the default format section, click on the drop down menu, and then with inside of here we're then going to be scrolling all the way to the top to 16 bit, 44,100Hz, CD quality, selecting that, and then once the send been selected, then navigating again down to the apply button, clicking apply, pressing ok, and pressing ok with inside of the sounds tab, and everything with inside of there has now been set. And now your Windows audio experience is completely optimized. Following on from that stage, what we're now going to be doing is ensuring that Windows is accessing the correct power plan to ensure that we're getting the most horsepower thrown towards your system hardware as possible as and when Windows might need it. This will not introduce any negative impacts to your system or heat or anything like that. It just ensures that Windows has access to the full horsepower of your machine as and when it needs it. So we're going to be navigating to the bottom left hand side and this time we're going to be typing in power now with inside of here, we're then going to be looking for this icon here. Doesn't matter what the option says, just look for the battery with a cord around it and click on any of the options. Inside of here, simply navigate to the power options found here at the top. Go down to the show additional plans option found here and then find the high performance plan. Make sure you go ahead and actually select the high performance plan just like so and then click on change plan settings. With inside of here, you can then set these two options to anything you wish to do so they do not change the outcome of this guide. These are just personal preference. Once you're done with that, simply go down to change advanced power settings. And then inside of this tab found here on the left hand side, go down to hard disk, turn off hard disk after, go to the setting, double click on the number and set the number to zero. Once you guys have done that, go down and press apply. Then scroll all the way down to the bottom and go to processor power management, open up minimum processor state and maximum processor state and ensure both of them are set to 100%. If they're not, go ahead and double click on the blue number, set it to 100, then press apply, then press OK. 
Hit save changes for your power options and you can then exit out and your power options are now optimized. Piggybacking off of that optimization, what we can now go ahead and do is actually unpark your CPU with inside of Windows to ensure that Windows can have full access to the full speed of your CPU as and when it needs it. This does not mean that your CPU will be 100% in usage all the time or anything like that. It just simply means that Windows has full access to every single bit of performance your CPU has to offer. As usually, it does throttle your CPU somewhat and this can sometimes cause stuttering with inside of games and actually decrease your frame rates. So for anyone doing any gaming on any machine, you should always do this. So what we're gonna be doing is navigating into the FPS pack provided, going to the optimizations folder, and then following the setup for the CPU core parking setup 2110 by double clicking. Once you guys have then double clicked on it, the setup wizard will then open. Simply go ahead and press next, accept the terms to the license agreement and press next, press next and install. And once the program has finished installing, ensure that the launch option found here is checked and press finish. Once you guys have done that, the program should automatically open. After a little while, the program will then open and it should look similar to this, but your numbers will be different. With inside of here, what we're then going to be doing is going ahead and ensuring that the power data plan found here in the top left hand side in the drop down menu is set to high performance as that's now the Windows power plan we're running on. Inside of here, you can see some basic information about the CPU which is installed with inside of your machine. If you guys find that interesting, you can find out there. Now, what we're going to be doing inside of here is going over to the three scaling options found here under Core Parking Index, Turbo Boost Index, and Frequency Scaling. Core Parking Index is the amount of cores Windows can have access to under load. Frequency Scaling Index is the speed of those cores under load which Windows has access to. And Turbo Boost is how fast those cores can boost up to. So for the best results possible, what we're gonna be doing is dragging these blue sliders over here all the way up to 100% for all three options. So simply drag it wherever it might be for you guys. Frequency Scaling Index, drag it all the way up to 100. Turbo Boost all the way up to 100. And Core Parking Index all the way up to 100. Once it's then been set, simply then go ahead and press the apply button and press OK. Once you're then done with inside of there, you can then go ahead and press the close button with inside of the program as those optimizations have now been completed. And last but not least, for the optimizations with inside of the operating system itself, you can actually go ahead and tailor Windows to better perform inside of gaming applications with inside of your registry editor. You can think of this as basically being a hidden gaming mode with inside of Windows to ensure that more power is going over towards gaming applications than other applications whilst they're running, ensuring that you guys are getting the best performance possible with inside of games, especially if you guys might be multitasking at the time of playing. So to do this, we're gonna be navigating into the bottom left-hand side and typing in run, then pressing enter. Then with inside of this box that opens up, we're then gonna be typing in reg edit, just like so, pressing enter again. And then with inside of here, the Windows registry editor will then open up. And this might look a little bit confusing to any of you guys who have not followed my guides in the past. Right, so starting off with inside of here, we're gonna be going into H key local machine, double clicking, going down to software and double clicking, then on the side of the software tab, we're then going to be scrolling down until we find the Microsoft folder. Double clicking on Microsoft. Then we're then going to be scrolling all the way down towards the bottom end and searching for a folder called Windows NT. Double click on Windows NT. Double click on current version. Then start scrolling down again to the M section and you're looking for a folder called Multimedia. Go ahead and double click on Multimedia. Then go to the System Profile folder and click on it just once. Once you guys have clicked that, you should then notice two registry keys have appeared here on the right hand side called Network Throttling Index and System Responsiveness. We're going to be starting off with Network Throttling Index by double clicking. With inside of here, remove any value data that might already be in there for you, no matter what number or letter it might be set to. And we're going to be setting the value data with inside of here to seven Fs. So simply go ahead and find the F key and press it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Once you guys have then gone ahead and done that, simply go ahead and press OK. Then go to the system responsiveness key, double click on that, go to the value data with inside of there and remove any number that might be in there. And again, set this one to zero. Once that's then set, go ahead and press okay. And we can then proceed to go back to the system profile folder that we originally clicked on once and double click on it this time. Double click on the tasks folder that opens up. Then finally go down to the games folder. With inside of here, you should then see these registry keys here on the right hand side pop up. And we're gonna be starting off with the GPU priority key. Double click on GPU priority, go to the value data, remove any value that might already be in there, and then I'm going to be inputting the value of eight. Again, please do ensure that you're on the GPU priority value when inserting the value of eight. Once you guys have done that, go ahead and press OK. Then go down to the priority key, double clicking on that, and this time remove any value data with inside of there. And we're now going to be setting the value data with inside of priority to six, and press OK. And last but not least, we're then going to be going to the scheduling category key found here, double clicking removing any value data inside of there. It's usually set to medium. And we're now gonna be setting this to high, which is H-I-G-H, -H, just like so. Once that's then been set in, go ahead and press okay. 
and we can then go ahead and exit out of the registry editor and those fixes have been applied. Again, if you guys found that part a little bit confusing, just watch it back in 50% speed or pause it a couple of times. It is very simple to get the hang of. Just follow the steps precisely and you'll be absolutely fine. Right, so once you guys have made it to this point in the video, what we can now go ahead and do, like we mentioned earlier on, is we're going to actually be going ahead and restarting our machines. So to do this properly, what we're going to be doing is navigating to the bottom left hand side, right clicking on the power button and going to the restart option here. Restarting our machines, coming back to this video, and getting ready to continue on with the last and final step. Welcome back to the video guys, you should now restart your PCs, log back in, and it got everything ready to go for the last step with inside of this tutorial. And the last step we're going to be doing is navigating to the FPS pack provided, going to the optimizations folder, and grabbing the time resolution program with inside of here, onto your desktop. Once it's on your desktop, we can now go ahead and explain what this program does and how to use it. What this program basically does is it lowers the amount of latency between your operating system, hardware within inside of your system, and the game application itself. This results in better overall FPS, much better input lag within inside of the game, and lower frame times, overall making the game smoother, faster, and a lot more responsive. I personally use this for editing programs, other games, State of Decay 2. I pretty much run this on every single high demanding program and I've been seeing results across the board from benchmarks all the way to render times to better frame rates within inside of games. So to use this program, it's very simple. Before you go ahead and actually do your task or play your game, you go ahead and double click on the program, go down to the maximum button, which, which sets the lowest amount of latency possible, minimize the program, open up your game or your program or whatever it is you're doing, Play it for however long you wish to do so. Once you've then closed the game and you're done playing, go back to the program by maximizing it, clicking default, and then exiting out of the program. And now assuming that we're now completely done with all of the optimizations within inside of this video, we can actually go ahead and boot into time resolution, select maximum, minimize it, and then the one last step left within inside of this video is to go down to the bottom left hand side and launch State of Decay 2. And there you guys have it, my ultimate FPS increase guide for State of Decay 2. Again guys, if you can leave any results, questions, queries, or suggestions down in that comment section down below, it will be absolutely phenomenal to hear from you guys and some of the results you're having. If you are happy with the outcome of this video, please do leave a like on it and share it around with any friends, family, co-workers, or teammates. Feel free to subscribe to the channel for content like this, whether it be updated guides to State of Decay 2, other game specific guides, or overall PC general maintenance, and how to get the most out of the tech you paid for without having to pay a penny. For any of you guys who wish to further support the work in which I do, and further support the channel again that patreon link is down in the description down below and on the screen now and last but not least guys thank you very much for watching this video i have been panjano and i am out